गुड गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन नमस्ते माई नेम इज अनिश देश पांडे एंड आई एम अ मेम्बर ऑफ योगा सोसाइटी बॉम्बे एम आई ऑडिबल इफ समी को जस्ट क्विकली प्रोवाइड अ कॉन्फर्मेशन दैट यू कैन हेयर मी ऑन द चैट क्यू सो ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ योगा सोसाइटी बॉम्बे आई वार्मली वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू to the second webinar in our webinar series about yoga at home uh, covid-19 has changed our perception of the world around us and it has definitely changed our lifestyle with increasing awareness about hygiene and health but decreased social activity and movement patanjali raja yoga is a is a wonderful way to prevent negativity maintain good health alleviate boredom and more so to talk to us about yoga and its various dimensions like the physical the spiritual and the mental we have with us our esteemed speaker dr madhusudan penna he is a doyen or oh, i'll uh, give a brief introduction of sir he is a doyen of yoga philosophy in the contem contemporary world having been awarded the prestigious sahitya academy award from the government of india and an honorary d lit from the national sanskrit university for his work on yoga vedanta and sanskrit literature He is at present the professor and dean of the Faculty of Indian Philosophy and Culture at the Kavi Kulya Guru Kalidas Sanskrit University in Ramtek. So, without further ado, I will like to hand over the microphone to Sir, and um, and we can begin the session. So, welcome, Sir. I'll just uh, make you the presenter. Yeah. Good morning. hear me anish ji yes yes i can hear you sir yeah so i think i can start uh yeah you is passing the presenter privileges yeah okay right you can begin yeah, sir i can start okay yeah. yeah namaste to all the participants of today's uh, webinar i am dr penna as introduced by anish ji and uh, i'm very happy to be with you because as he uh, introduced now we are in a different situation yes it has changed our perception everything but still it is after all our life and uh, what happened to our predecessor some 100 years back we don't know but we are facing in our generation so naturally it uh, uh, it becomes our duty to understand the things happening and uh, accommodate ourselves in the present situation so that we can we can lead a very comfortable uh, healthy life so on this occasion of uh, international yoga day the yoga stha iit club has uh, uh, initiated so many programs on this yoga and i'm very happy that uh, i am also associated with that now this is simple yoga at home but it is not that simple also because yoga as arvind ghosh says is every moment of our life so it 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 looks very simple but still not simple here Uh, i would like to share some slides with you i think you can uh, see the slides on your screen yoga at home during covid 2019 the problem with our day to day life is balancing things after all balancing is yoga we all know samatvam yoga uchchate is what the bhagavad gita explains to us balance so we are supposed to balance everything on one side we have the beauty of living but on the other side we have the duty of living so between these two we oscillate and we try to accommodate ourselves and uh, yoga of course helps us in maintaining this balance because what we have to do and what 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 we do every day and actually there is an urge inside inside of everybody to enjoy the beauty of living actually the the beauty of every moment of life should be properly enjoyed 
and for that we should maintain the balance between these two the duty and the beauty but if one of these uh, uh, dominates the other so naturally life becomes very stressful and you know that stress uh, that actually uh, has become nowadays a very common phenomenon in modern society because everybody including a small child is under a lot of stress and stress being inevitable we have to develop ourselves our immunity our coping system the mechanism so uh, instead of depending on the external things and being much on that we can build our own system it's it's actually uh, i should say non expensive and it is within our hands and we can we can develop it the only thing is we have to devote some time and every day if we can understand and devote some time from our life so we can definitely lead our life into a very healthy one balancing these two and in this process the you, you can appreciate the slides here see mm. the images on one side you have the balancing but balance itself Sorry is to the beauty sir yes, uh, yes but i i think uh, we are not able to see, see the slides right now okay yeah but uh, yeah uh, i have uh, okay ek one minute huh? oh there are no slides yeah uh Ashish ji can you help me uh, where do you find this uh, sharing slides here on on the top left uh, there is a share tab and if you click on that the first option is share content oh recording and uh, uh, uh no that's on the top left of the screen there should be a share tab beside file and edit sorry it has only recording and uh, the other one is uh, visible uh, excuse me sir sir do you see yeah. something on the lower bottom side of your screen some yeah uh, mic icon mic um sorry uh connect to your device speaker microphone switch to desktop this much can you please share the link to yeah. you? Yes, sir. beside the recording button that you see and beside the start my video on um, my microphone there is also share content button at the bottom of the screen yeah uh, yeah beside that uh, red color recording yeah. we have only yes, yoga star webinar agenda meeting number video address the 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 support only this much i see okay uh acha yeah, i'm trying i i, okay. I think i can get it okay right yes and now we can see huh? you can see yes yeah. yeah thank you sir okay very sorry yeah uh yeah uh, all the yoga sadhaka please uh, bear with me and new to this is new to me so balancing life we were talking and uh, as i told you these two things actually trouble us the duty and the beauty so we want to relax we want to enjoy the beauty of living but at the same time we are subjected to lot of uh, uh, problems and uh, suffering like uh, because duty also comes in and duty carries along with that 
so much of responsibility and so much of stress also and in this uh, process we uh, we naturally uh, think of balancing and there we have uh, see here on one side you have the balancing life and on the other side you have the beauty of living but as lord krishna says in the bhagavad gita where there is balance there is beauty because beauty lies in balancing and in the nature also we find everywhere that it is beautifully arranged and that balancing itself brings beauty so therefore we all should understand that if we give up if we stop putting efforts if we stop uh, balancing life then automatically the beauty is lost so therefore all yoga is for balancing this all life forces so in this uh, process we find that stress and automatically when it is beyond our control it is distress but we have to learn the skill to distress ourselves and in this process uh, this uh, selia says it's not stress that kills us it's our reaction to it so this is very important that actually nobody is killed by the stress but our reaction because the same stressful situation is not uh, uh, harmful to all individuals it depends how we respond to it so that's why i say positive stresses and negative stresses so something is positive to one individual but the same may be negative to another individual it all depends how we respond to that and in that particular uh, response how we prepare ourselves that's very important that if we are properly equipped with the right skill and expertise then automatically our response level will be high and the stress will be within control because if if stress goes beyond control it leads to all uh, psychosomatic disorders also so these are actually the side effects of stress so that's why every one of us should know the amount of stress and its uh, uh, psychosomatic effects and what happens in the body when stress takes place and uh, actually the uh, the stage before stress and after stress if these are properly understood i think we can uh, cope with that and in that process our practice of yoga does definitely help us and Uh, generally as i told you the distress and you stress the negative and positive stresses are there but it all depends as i told you how we react to that so if we take proper rest and proper exercise then this negative stress also will become positive but we should understand when we are getting into a stress situation and when it is going Uh, beyond our control so that we can understand with the help of these symptoms like worry so this is uh, in the initial stage that we start worrying then tense feeling tense then getting tired very frequently and easily and getting frightened or you can say uh, unnecessary fear and elated positively negatively depressed then we have uh, other like anxious anxious anger so the anxiousness is also a result of stress and irritation of course here it is anger but irritation getting irritated easily is also a symptom of stress and initially if we can identify these and uh, uh prepare ourselves internally then i think we need not go for medication also without consulting a doctor also we can uh, uh, treat ourselves that's very important and in this process we uh, can think of small daily yoga it's actually yoga has been the traditional name given to the balancing uh, life method but actually within this yoga you find 
simple sukshma vyayam of about 20 minutes or you can say surya namaskaram if you do all the sukshma vyayama can be included some of many of these will be included so first you have sukshma vyayama sukshma vyayama that uh, that the day should be with because every day if we can practice some sukshma vyayama that means warm up exercises or surya namaskaram that means uh, uh, either one will do because body gets uh, properly warmed up and you can later practice asanas and pranayama so patanjali maharshi also says tasmin sati shwasa prashwasiyo gati vichheda pranayama so we are supposed to practice and perfect asanas first then we should go for pranayama and meditation because without these the body does not get ready for the pranayama and meditation and sometimes they will uh, leave some negative uh, effects also so therefore it is proper that we start our day with sukshma vyayam sukshma vyayam basically include rotation stretching bending and twisting so all the asanas are properly placed in these because if we give movement to these like rotating twisting bending and stretching our body properly not much then it will become sukshma vyayama and uh, if uh, you you have learnt and used to the surya namaskaram it is very very useful because surya namaskaram actually 12 uh, poses 12 practices and at least if you can practice surya namaskara 12 times a day 12 times in the sense each one repeated 12 times so this will also do otherwise uh, aged people more than 70 so they can do walking this is also very good alternate day because uh, walking for 20 minutes and other pranayama and meditation every day will naturally boost up our immunity and uh, we can cope up with any stressful situation so therefore if there is anybody uh, above the age of 70 then walking is good otherwise surya namaskaram and sukshma vyayama they can be practiced alternately then uh, alternate day you can practice chosen some asanas i have told you that all asanas are not recommended for all so there may be 60 lakh asana as geranda samhita and hatha yoga pradipika say but we should uh, choose that particular asana which suits our body composition body system so therefore it is all uh, always advised uh, that we should go to a trained yoga instructor and learn these things so uh, though yoga asana yoga practice everything is uh, taught on uh, tv or youtube online anywhere please understand that it is not that good because learning these things directly from a living teacher is always recommended if we simply practice all these by watching tv all that so there may be side effects also and there will not be any person to help you so that's why we should all remember always that uh, some of these asanas and other things are not good when they are learned from tv and uh, other online sources every day we should definitely practice these pranayama along with deep breathing because not all pranayama is deep breathing but pranayama includes deep breathing and this is very good especially when you combine this pranayama with deep breathing like you can uh, practice uh, kapalabhati though it is not pranayama you can practice it comfortably and you can practice bhastrika dramari because uh, out of my personal experience which i got uh, when i was practicing yoga in the netherlands with uh, mahesh yogi we were taught some of these techniques before we were initiated into the meditation and i really appreciate the huge benefits of this deep breathing especially when we chant omkara and naturally after omkara you tend to take deep breathing and for a few seconds you hold it and re- re- release the breath 
and then take again so if if pranayama is practiced along with omkara it has tremendous good result it's really very very useful so we can practice that also and meditation is actually very typical thing that uh, many people put the question uh, how to do meditation what to do all these things but when the same question was put before uh, lord buddha he smiled and replied meditation what to do how to do is meaningless because meditation is not doing anything so if you do something it will not be meditation he said similarly i also personally feel that not doing anything is meditation but to get to that particular state we have to do lot of things like pranayama asana all these actually uh, prepare our body and mind for that state of meditation so if we uh, practice it in proper manner and uh, we we actually strengthen the entire process like sukshma vyayam or surya namaskar then asan then pranayam and meditation so definitely we enjoy the fruit of this yoga that is patanjali yoga and in meditation if you uh, just uh, look for proper method you find so many methods like you have dynamic meditation of uh, you have sudarshan kriya and meditation of shri shri ravi shankar you have transcendental meditation of mahesh yogi system so uh, actually each one of these is very effective depending on how the teacher teaches you and how much you practice so it all depends on how much we put ourselves into that so if we really sincerely practice this meditation it will have all positive effect and for that meditation initially we can choose a particular point and focus our mind or we can simply blank ourselves emptying ourselves internally that is also known as meditation this is the uh, method recommended by ramana maharshi so just you empty up you observe watch your ideas and watch simply ideas empty up this so this is also recommended so this is also and recommended. this way also this we, way can we can make yoga a make part of our daily life in this process sage this patanjali sage has patanjali uh, has uh, recommended this holistic recommended yoga this called holistic yoga called the eight limbs of yoga eight limbs of yoga in this you have so asan asan that means uh, proper posture proper and posture uh, and see uh, actually see, samadhi or the samadhi result of dhyana is the samambolam of yoga of yoga but mind here mind here unless we unless we prepare ourselves unless we train our body we cannot get into this state of dhyana and samadhi dhyana and samadhi that is the problem and for that first thing we have to do first thing is physical exercise exercise Yes, you can stretch your body. You can twist your body, and give some movement to the body. Then sit for pranayama. As once the body is uh, properly warmed up, then it gets ready for pranayama. Then, if you practice pranayama, all the nadi nadi means the nerve channels, all the nerves are invigorated, and they are really purified, cleaned. and that pranayama gives us lot of energy through the oxygen we take inside so this is pranayama so for 15 to 20 minutes if we practice pranayama we get lot of energy initially you can practice 10 minutes also but you can increase later depending on how much time you can dedicate for this then once you are convinced that you have done proper pranayama not uh, not rigorous pranayama in the beginning in the beginning only anulom vilom and kapalabhati these are good but later if you can find a good teacher you can practice the higher methods of pranayama and once you are convinced that you have done enough pranayama then go to pratyahara pratyahara is prati ahara with drawing all your senses that means inside also not looking at anything not hearing anything not getting the knowledge of external world 
and just withdrawing the uh, function of the senses sense organs so that is pratyahara and sitting in the posture same posture it may be it, it is padmasana or vajrasana generally only two asanas are uh, prescribed for this uh, dhyana so you sit in vajrasana or padmasana then you practice pranayama and then pratyahara pratyahara means you just observe yourself within whether your sense organ is going after any external object then simply and very intelligently you get it back that means you don't fight with that you don't fight with your own self that will lead to all split personality so therefore um, always fighting with ourselves is not good then we go for dharana after pratyahara patanjali maharshi has very intelligently given this uh, dharana dharana means tatra desha bandhas chittasya dharana says the patanjali yoga sutra that is fixing your mind at one particular point this is after pratyahara so you have <coughs> withdrawn your senses and then now you are placing on a particular point it can be a sound it can be any visible thing also but close your eyes and imagine and try to concentrate on that particular uh, point that means you are actually concentrating all your mind force at one point this is known as dharana there are so many types of dharana akasha dharana prithvi dharana jala dharana vayu dharana within inside the body but generally uh, omkara as shabda dharana or uh, aditya as the rupa dharana they are actually very good and then we should go for dhyana and now you have been focusing on a particular point and the moment has come when you have to discard that also now you are no more focusing on a particular moment because you have transcended even that moment that is known as dhyana and dhyana still you are aware you are aware of the entire process of dharana everything but a moment comes when you slip into a, a, a different state of dhyana that slowly you start forgetting about yourself this is a state of falling into oblivion you are oblivious to your observation everything so this internal awareness is also lost that is dhyana leading to samadhi so till dhyana we can practice but samadhi is not something to be practiced but something which happens so for that particular state of samadhi we have to practice dhyana diligently and yes initially dhyana is practiced and with all determination with all honesty this honesty is known as shraddha in uh, our yoga sutra uh, patanjali maharshi says this shraddha mulo hi yoga ha because it is the base of all our pra- practice in yoga especially that shraddha leads us to that divine wisdom if if we cultivate this shraddha then automatically it takes us through the yoga life and lands us in that great world of prajna ratam bhara tatra prajna so this is actually a wonderful life promised by patanjali in his yoga sutra and everybody can experience that for that what investment we have to make that is nothing but shraddha because yoga is in a manner very social but in another manner it is very 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 personal so therefore it is all um, after all left to you how much you devote your time your energies your whatever you have so how much you invest for this yoga and with all sincerity because sincerity is not something to be purchased in the market so it is you only within you so therefore if you have that shraddha that sincerity or honesty so definitely you can uh, continue in the path of this yoga and that will definitely take us into samadhi samadhi is not uh, easy for all but not difficult also as i told you it all depends 
on the individual so therefore samadhi can be experienced but samadhi cannot be experienced depending on how much we have practiced all the other so whatever we may be doing asana pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana samadhi whatever we may be practicing after all we have to see these two things very important yama niyama without these two all the other six components of yoga lose their significance and they become mere physical practices mental practices so therefore patanjali maharshi has actually appended these two in the beginning itself yama and niyama so without these yama and niyama uh, i don't think we can get the benefit of this yoga practice what are this yama niyama nothing our social restriction personal restriction that means we should maintain some control we should maintain some con- restraints so that we lead a chaste pious life personally and socially and yama niyama are nothing but these like proper cleanliness hygiene it is one of the shaucha santosha tapaswadhyay ishwara pranidhana niyama it is one of the niyama and at the same time santosha being contentful all the while not being irritated not being jealous so that is actually niyama tapaha so just uh, practicing rigorous yoga is tapaha swadhyaya that means all the while studying and discussing only about yoga only about self atma that is swadhyaya then ishwara pranidhana so believing that there is a supreme power that leads the entire universe and us also and just believing in that super power is ishwara pranidhana and naturally when you believe in that you develop a kind of love pure pristine love for that inner energy because it is inner and outer also antar bahishcha tat sarvam vyapya narayana sthitah say the veda so therefore that ishwara pranidhana is also important and we have other like ahimsa ahimsa means non violence not hurting anybody in any way satya and uh, men- that means telling truth and maintaining truth asteya not stealing others property brahmacharya maintaining proper uh, bachelorhood or you can say chaste life aparigraha not accepting anything from anybody accepting knowledge so these are yama and niyama and these actually are the eight components of yoga that sage patanjali has given to us uh, maybe 3rd century 4th century bc but i believe that in the coming thousands of years also crores of people like us will be properly benefited by the practice of these eight limbs of yoga or eight components of yoga or simply ashta anga yoga and we are also uh, really convinced by the efficacy of this ashtanga yoga we practice and we encourage others to practice it and wellness health it is nothing but work well sleep well eat well think well do well this is wellness work well that means you do good thing for your family for your society for everybody work well sleep well but take proper sleep because it's very important that the entire system should get proper rest so that it it gets rejuvenated so sleep well eat well because to function properly body requires some energy and that energy is provided in the form of food and water so therefore eat well that means not for the tongue but for the body so therefore don't live to eat but eat to live yeah so that is important and think well think well means actually we should uh, be aware of every thought we are getting because natural or basic instinct is very strong that every time they will be uh, forcing us to external world only and in this uh, uh, process we should be very very careful about what we are thinking and uh, uh, in the previous slide also i had shown ashtanga yoga 
ahimsa satya asteya brahmachari aparigraha etc so if we remember every moment that we are leading a different life called yoga life and we are sadhaka and we have devoted our life to the practice of yoga so naturally our mind gets this alert message every moment that it does not get into the snares of the external matter material world and we will get definitely positive thoughts and in this process whenever you get some bad thought please sit take deep breath and do some pranayama and omkara so after 2 3 minutes you find some change in your uh, in your yourself and uh, all the negative thinking all the bad thoughts will definitely go away do well this is actually the philanthropic activities that we should share everything with the uh, fellow people not only human beings even other uh, bodies like uh, animals and birds so this is do well because we are working well for our the family for our family or for the society but when we do we do well for the entire planet so therefore this is very important without any uh, return if we do something it is do well this way when we practice these five so wellness is promised it is definite and in this uh, uh, proper life of yoga physical activity is very important because the more we lead inactive uh, life the more we will be prone to different types of uh, diseases because recent study has shown that an under appreciated primary cause of most chronic problems disorders is lack of sufficient daily physical activity and especially in the days of covid uh, we know that because of several other uh, constraint also we simply sit in the house our movements of uh, our movements physical and uh, other thing they are actually restricted and therefore we uh, slowly get disorders loss of functional capacities with chronological aging they may be metabolic syndrome obesity insulin resistance pre diabetes or type 2 diabetes non alcoholic liver disease cardiovascular diseases cognitive functions and diseases bone and connective tissue disorders digestive problems pulmonary kidney problems these may not be uh, uh, immediate but they are imminent because if body actually physical body is meant for some movement activity and that if we go out and simply take few strides there here and there uh, simply walk for some time and come back we feel really energy inside we lead in active life so gradually we are subjecting ourselves to so many uh, mal functions within uh, disorders within so initially they may not be that problematic they may be uh, simple or slight uh, change in our body but gradually they will take us into these disorders and sometimes chronic diseases also because all these actually are related because everything is related. all these systems like our uh, respiratory system digestive system uh, excretory system neurological system and our uh, circular cardiovascular system all these are actually interrelated so therefore if one particular uh, part of the body dysfunctions automatically it leaves an effect on the other also therefore we should be very careful that we leave, we we give proper movement to the body Uh, morning and evening and don't think that you are doing household work but apart from that you have to give some movement to the body in a proper manner like practice yoga practicing surya namaskara at least for a few minutes so this is very important and in this process sukshma vyayama helps us it is nothing but workout workout for what for each internal organ joint and muscle because the entire skeletal system is supported by the muscular system and muscular system is supported by the uh, uh, that um, skeletal system and these are actually interdependent 
so many joints so many ligaments so many muscles are connected so for that we should give proper movement and this sukshma vyayama handles the prevention and cure of many ailments and increases the strength and vigor see here if we devote 10 to 15 minutes every day for sukshma vyayama so we will be out of this danger many ailments will be kept away and strength and vigor will definitely get and there will be an increase in the function of all different organs and systems in the body otherwise slowly we get aging so in this sukshma vyayama you find all the benefits but if you think that sukshma vyayama may not be possible you want some fresh breath then no problem go out walk walking reduces stress and builds immunity and especially in the days of this corona this covid 2019 we should develop this immunity within and developing immunity within is not just a thought not just some dream we can do that with the help of this ashtanga yoga sukshma vyayama and especially surya namaskar physical exercise is one of the best things one can do for brain see so if you do something physically it affects the brain because it increases the production of new brain cells and slows down brain cell aging It can increase levels of dopamine which actually gives us positivity all happiness so that particular feeling is rooted in dopamine that uh, chemical and uh, proper exercise that increases the release of this particular dopamine and we feel really elated we feel really very happy that's important and in this process <clears throat> we should do uh, simple asana, asana uh, not straining too much each part of the body should get proper movement this is very important and if we uh, really yeah so if we do the asana at least uh, half an hour and i have told you that if if you are unable to practice that so don't worry uh, alternate day you do that physical exercise and asana alternate day but every day pranayama and meditation so if you do that so depending on your age also uh, and uh, other maybe may other factors that is available space and uh, your health all these so some of these uh, asanas are very very useful like simple asanas like sitting in padmasana sitting in vajrasana this actually sitting postures but sitting in that particular manner also your body gets some movement and uh, another thing is it that proper posture you will get for dhyana and dharana later so padmasana and vajrasana very good but along with that in the sitting posture also you can practice ardha matsyendrasana so because of some technical problem we will not be able to show you the videos but still you can see most of these on the youtube uh, and uh, if you find a good teacher it's good and uh, this uh, naukasana is very good for abdominal muscles also because so many uh, digestive problems they are they actually they they you get rid of those if you practice naukasana and sarvangasana but sarvangasana is not recommended for all though it is the raja of all asana sarvangasana is the king of asana but still not everybody can practice it gradually one should develop this strength to practice sarvangasana bhujangasana is very very good because it is uh, very good for our vertebrae the spinal cord and uh, the the thoracic cage also it's very good serpent posture dhanurasana is not uh, for all then rukshasana tadasana they are just standing and stretching your body that's very good matsyasana again not good for all because sometimes you lose the balance and just uh, fall on your nose that is the problem there and gomukhasana that actually uh, for the thoracic part of the body the upper uh, torso of the body that you will give proper movement through gomukhasana and vimanasana and shirshasana they are also very good but not uh, good for all then surya namaskara each uh, movement that is total movements and 12 sets of these 
you practice 12 times then you get maximum benefits and if you develop like saman ramdas he used to practice thousands of times so this actually is the uh, secret of long life it strengthens our back our muscles and uh, blood sugar levels are brought down it improves metabolism and blood circulation so therefore we we find glow on the skin and ensures regular menstrual cycle for women so especially when women are not uh, able to practice any other yoga so if they practice surya namaskara without chanting the mantras all that so there will be regularity later also so if they practice regularly not during those days but otherwise also if they practice they get regularity and it actually helps them during their days of pregnancy and uh, uh, after that uh, delivery also it will definitely help them so that's why i always recommend the practice of surya namaskara to the youngsters that if they practice it they definitely lead a very good healthy life and in this process kapalabhati has got very good effect like it generates heat in your body and it dissolves toxins and other waste matter improves the fun- functioning of kidneys liver and uh, removes the stress from eyes and it erases dark circles enhances blood circulation and digestion and it can cure blood pressure disorders heart ailments baldness but mind you that kapalabhati should be done first then anulom vilom so this is the order so if we practice kapalabhati first and then go for anulom vilom the benefit of anulom vilom will be more so that's why when you start please start with okay after sukshma vyayam surya namaskar then some asan after that come to that means when you sit in vajrasan or padmasan then you practice kapalbhati first then anulom vilom then any bhastrika or bharamari if you are trained in that then go for other dharana etc so this way kapalbhati should be practiced and it is actually a very very rigorous method through which the entire body systems are cleaned up non stop kapalbhati 60 times in 1 minute 300 times in 5 5 minutes so initially you can practice this for 3 minutes and gradually increase to 5 minutes so in 5 minutes you can practice 300 repetitions and after a regular practice uh, for a couple of months you can increase that the time to 15 minutes also so with this man with benefits you can uh, gain but it should be under the guidance of a proper yoga teacher this is kapalbhati how much it should be done and actually it is very effective in all bp diabetic and uh, especially obesity and other uh, problems if they are chronic you should of course take medical advice but otherwise initial stages you can gradually start with kapalabhati and uh, get good results pranayama after kapalabhati you should go for anulom vilom the difference is you inhale through your left nostril and exhale through the right one and the same repeated the opposite way and uh, if you if you repeat this it is anulom vilom without holding the breath if you hold the breath it becomes nadi shodhan pranayama and it is very useful especially the days of stress because the moment you feel stress you go to a very open space sit there and take slowly deep breath and then hold for few seconds and slowly release that and you feel lot of change in yourself so that is because it gives proper supply of oxygen to our blood into our blood and uh, to all the cells of body then go for meditation because it is very useful especially when we want mental peace concentration and inner happiness it's very good because uh, what happens uh, in netherlands in america and other areas also they have uh, experimented on the effects of this meditation and uh, realized that you listen to good music you eat good food you go for shopping 
you sit with your uh, beloved person you chat with him or chat with her and you get all positive energy that's good but the study found that 64% increase in dopamine production after meditating for 1 hour compared to when resting quietly so you sleep for 3 hours or do meditation for 20 minutes the result of meditation will be more compared to other so therefore for healthy life we should exercise regularly learn to meditate and uh, frequently get massage and we should take proper rest sleep well and listen to good music also because it actually diverts us and through that actually we come out of the stressful situation so this manner we can definitely lead good healthy life and uh, with this i conclude this small lecture only some tips are given to all yoga practitioners so please don't worry don't uh, always give hypnotic suggestions to yourself that life is gone i am i am under stress and this stress does not leave me all this is negative don't give that go for positive life through yoga and uh, just it is your life your life your life and you are responsible for that and every other person will only help you in get getting positive things but after all you can make your own life positive so with these words i conclude here and i thank all you the yoga sadhakas thank you all dhanyavada uh, thank you thank you very much sir it was a quite an enlightening session we love the slides we love the clarity and the methodological way of explaining uh, i think if it's okay with you we can take maybe one or two questions and then we can wrap up the session is that sure right? sure anish ji yeah. yes yes of course <laughs> okay so if if anyone has any questions they are uh, free to ask them right now uh, either raise your hand or unmute yourselves and you can ask in case uh, you have any questions for sir yeah there is a question meditation or physical activity which is to be done first eh? so uh, simply according to patanjali first physical activity then relax through pranayama then practice meditation and you will get all positive result okay how to maintain regularity in doing pranayama or surya namaskara so uh, through this slide i i think i i have made it clear but still uh, pranayama regularity it means every day for one week to 10 days you practice the same repetitions don't increase but after one week or 10 days you can increase that because by the time you will realize how much your body is responding to that and uh, if there are any complications you naturally consult a doctor otherwise you go ahead increasing the repetitions similarly surya namaskara initially you practice 12 times 12 rounds actually 12 rounds and you can increase going to 100 also depending on your physical strength are there any specific books where we can learn all this yes definitely uh, luckily we have great traditional institutes which have developed their own method uh, you have Uh, the uh, ghantadi mitra mandal or lonavala kaivalya dham from kaivalya dham you can get good uh, material printed material online material also you can get svyas some material from that you can get uh, from munger that uh, uh, yoga institute and in marathi you have good books from nashik yoga dham so so many yoga institutes are there they are doing doing good job and you get all information online also right can we do pranayam in the evening or strictly morning uh, yeah no problem uh, you join little late so uh, but actually pranayam has been made an integral part of our daily life morning afternoon night but hatha yoga especially in the hatha pradipika they have uh, ordained that particular practice of pranayama eight times a day but because of our other activities we cannot devote that much time so generally morning and evening is highly recommended it's very very good 
बिकॉज इट क्लियंस दर सिस्टम हाँ ट्वेल्व सेट्स मीन्स या फ्रॉम बोथ लेग्स इट्स एक्चुअली ट्वेल्व टाइम्स बोथ लेग्स uh i cannot uh, sir please advise for lower back pain issues how to go about it yeah uh this is actually it depends on which uh, part of the vertebra that means the spinal cord is affected but if it is the initial stage of that you can practice kapalbhati and uh, take lot of water because this uh, gives very good effect this leaves very good effect on your body so therefore take uh, right amount of water every day and uh, practice kapalbhati and uh, third thing is stretching body gradually along with breathing is very good because uh, tadasana vrukshasana when we do we actually stress and while stretching we should take breath and when we actually bend our body twist our body we should release that breathing that's very important can we do meditation any time or specific time Actually, uh, there is one Brahma Sutra. Yatra ekagrata tatra avishesha says the Brahma Sutra. Wherever, whenever you find that your mind is able to focus, then you can sit for meditation. But generally, it is recommended that you go for meditation uh, early in the morning and in the evening also. And I cannot do regularly. Please give some tips for keeping regularity. So actually, Patanjali Maharshi says. Uh, he he enumerates the obstacles in the practice of yoga vyadhi sthyana samshaya pramada alasya avirati bhranti darshan alabdha bhumikatva anavasthitatva so there one one obstacle is alasya laziness so uh, you actually tell yourself that it is your life you have to enjoy the benefits so therefore you take a proper resolution you you determine yourself and uh, get to that Uh, initially it is difficult but we all doing so that's why you can also do that jitendra ji no problem is it okay to do anulom vilom using left hand yes yes hand is not uh, uh, important there you can do can we have the recording of this presentation you can ask the organizers and uh, can we perform surya namaskara right after getting out of bed no uh, warm up is required we cannot immediately perform this surya namaskara uh, we should uh, practice light warm up exercise then only we should go for surya namaskar right okay i yeah. think uh, we can close the floor for questions yeah and, um, thank you all yeah. yeah okay so i'd like to extend the thanks to professor panna for panna for coming yeah. here yeah. and thank giving his time to actually be with us and give a wonderful lecture to all of us and i thank all of the participants for attending the session i hope you really enjoyed it and are able to take some nice take home messages from it and uh, just as sir said you can look up those videos of the asanas that uh, sir mentioned online but make sure that you have some uh, regular yoga practitioner or yoga instructor who you can consult to um, make sure you are doing it in the correct way so definitely so thank you all for attending and uh, yeah we look forward to seeing you yogastha is also conducting uh, events for, like the common yoga protocol and the surya namaskar challenge yogathon tomorrow on the international day of yoga so you all are invited to register for that and certainly participate and yes okay uh, here we will conclude the session once again thank you sir thank it you it was wonderful having you